in cooperation with the Canadian Wildlife Service and other state, provincial, and private conservation partners. The 60th Annual Waterfall Breeding Population and Habitat Survey is now complete. This video gives a brief overview of habitat conditions and duck and goose population estimates across the survey area for the 2015 season. In May and June 2015, air crews flew across more than 1 million square miles of waterfowl habitat in large segments of the U.S. and Canada. Ground crews also surveyed a part of the same area to validate the aerial survey numbers. The air and ground crews worked with biologists from the Migratory Bird Program to summarize habitat conditions, determine breeding population estimates, and draft annual species reports. For more detail and insights from the survey crews, to access the waterfowl status report, and other information about waterfowl management across North America, visit the flyways.us website. In general, conditions during the 2015 survey were characterized as average to above average moisture across most of the traditional and eastern survey areas. Despite an early spring over most of the survey area, habitat conditions during the 2015 survey were similar to or poorer than last year. In many areas, the decline in habitat conditions was due to average to below average annual precipitation, with the exception of portions of southern Saskatchewan and central latitudes of eastern Canada the total pond estimate for Prairie Canada and the U.S. combined was 6.3 million, which was 12% below the 2014 estimate of 7.2 million, but 21% above the long-term average. Following a relatively mild winter, the U.S. prairies also recorded in early spring, although precipitation since last summer was average to mostly below average. Habitat conditions in Montana and the Dakotas declined relative to 2014, despite significant rainfall in May, which came too late to benefit most early nesting waterfowl. The total pond estimate for the north central U.S. was 2.2 million, which is 16% below the 2014 estimate, but 28% above the long-term average. Overall, population estimates for the majority of species of ducks remain steady for this breeding season. The total 2015 duck population estimate excluding scoters, eiders, long-tailed ducks, mergansers, and wood ducks, is 49.5 million birds. This population estimate is similar to the 2014 estimate of 49.2 million and is 43% higher than the long-term average. Estimated mallard abundance is 11.6 million, which is similar to the 2014 estimate and 51% above the long-term average of 7.7 .7 million. Estimated abundance of gadwall is 3.8 million, which is 100% above their long-term average of 1.9 million. Abundance estimates for redheads is 1.2 million, 71% above their long-term averages. The canvasback estimate is 0.8 million, which is similar to their 2014 estimate and 30% above their long-term average. The blue-winged teal estimate is 73% above the long-term average of 4.9 million. At 4.1 million, green-winged teal are 19% above the 2014 estimate of 3.4 million and 98% above the long-term average. The combined lesser and greater scop estimate is 4.4 million and is similar to the 2014 estimate. This is 13% below the long-term average of 5 million. The American Widgeon estimate is 3 million, which is similar to last year's estimate and 17% above their long-term average of 2.6 million. Northern pintail numbers are slightly lower than last year and remain below their long-term average. Their estimate is 3 million, which is 24% below the long-term average of 4 million. Estimated abundance of American black ducks in the Eastern Survey area was 500,000, which is 11% below last year's estimate of 0.6 million and 13% below the long-term average. Good to excellent production was expected for goose and swan populations nesting in the western Arctic and Alaska due to the early spring there. Variable or average production was expected in the central and eastern Arctic, with average to below average production expected along the Hudson Bay and southern Baffin Island, where late ice and snowmelt occurred. 
Production of temperate nesting Canada geese from most of their North American range was expected to be average. 136,500 Pacific and 111,400 Atlantic brant were counted during the winter of 2015. These counts were 16% and 23% lower than last year, respectively. Atlantic brant have had low juvenile production for the past three years, and below average production was expected again in 2015. Breeding conditions were good on Bylot Island, and an average to above average fall flight is expected for greater snow geese. Many populations of lesser snow geese and Ross's geese remain elevated, despite efforts to reduce their overabundant populations. However, counts of light geese within the Pacific, Central, and Mississippi flyways during fall and winter surveys were 15% lower than last year. One million mid-continent greater white-fronted geese were observed during the fall of 2014, which was 29% greater than the last survey in 2012. A population of 479,000 Pacific greater white-fronted geese was predicted for the fall of 2015, which was 25% lower than last year. Estimates of the North Atlantic, Atlantic, and Eastern Prairie populations of Canada geese were similar to recent averages. Southern James Bay population and Mississippi Valley population breeding Canada goose numbers were down, with average or below average fall flights predicted. Estimated abundance of resident and giant Canada geese was 1 million within the Atlantic Flyway and 1.6 million with the Mississippi Flyway, and both were similar to last year. The estimated abundances of Aleutian and Cackling Canada geese were 189,000 and 340,000 respectively. Fall flights of lesser, taverners, and other central and western populations of Canada geese were expected to be similar to last year. 117,100 eastern and 56,300 western population tundra swans were counted during the winter of 2015, and these are 12% higher and 17% lower respectively than last year's indices. While this year's survey results were very favorable, when and where waterfall will be encountered this fall depends on many factors. Food availability and conditions of water sources all influence local duck and goose abundance, distribution, behavior, and ultimately, hunter success. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service continues to monitor changes throughout the survey regions and is mindful of large-scale development changes and extreme weather, which may negatively impact duck production in the future. Conservation efforts continue to be important to ensure continued population stability of ducks and geese. Waterfowl hunters contribute directly to conservation efforts through the purchase of a migratory bird hunting and conservation stamp, known as the duck stamp. The purchase of habitat from duck stamp sales ultimately benefits both waterfowl and other birds. For more information about the duck stamp, annual habitat and waterfowl population surveys, and the exciting world of waterfowl management across North America, visit the flyways.us website.